This isn't any old tractor. It's a custom-built native seed sowing machine. It's planting native grass seeds at this vineyard in South Australia's idyllic Eden Valley wine region, where tradition meets innovation. Come on through. Dan Falkenberg is the vineyard manager of Eden Hall Wines. This is our Shiraz Viognier, so this is 2003, one of the early, early wines. As the winner of the Barons of Barossa Viticulturist of the Year two years ago, he credits his success to embracing innovation. Innovation is, is key. You really have to think outside the square nowadays. And Dan Falkenberg has certainly had to adapt. The vineyard is 100% off-grid. There's no mains electricity or piped water and the property's dam has been empty for the last three years due to drought. Not having water availability, all the rainfall that we get is obviously absorbed into the ground. So we want to maximise the amount of water we have in the ground. He believes that good results start from the ground up, and so he's planting native grasses in the vineyard. A bit of germination going on there, which is good to see. He's enlisted the help of ecologist Andrew Fanny, the chief executive of Seeding Natives, an environmental charity that specialises in restoring native grasslands. South Australia has lost 99% of our native grasslands and at least 90% of grassy woodlands. So we, we are all about bringing back the native grasslands. Many foreign perennial grass species were deliberately introduced into Australia after European settlement. But native grasses are well adapted to Australia's varying climate and low fertility soils and are important in maintaining ecosystem health. So what we do is we collect a small amount of seed from the natural environment. It could be as much as what fits in the palm of your hand. Put that into a nursery situation, grow it up, put it into a seed production area and actually within a year or two harvest huge quantities of seed that can be used for the broad acre sowing of native grasses and grassland species. With the seed collection method sorted, the main challenge is sowing them. So Andrew, what have we got here? Okay, so here we've got an example of like a traditional agricultural seed. Uh, this is actually rye or sterile rye. And I hold my hand here and I make a little gap at the bottom. And you see that it just flows out the bottom nice and evenly. That's what traditional agricultural machinery requires from seed. And I'll grab some native species. We'll start with a native spear grass, and I'll just hold it with two fingers. So there we go, we've got thousands of seeds, as we do in this pile, but here are the natives, and as you can see, it'd be extremely difficult to put that through any kind of agricultural machinery. This next one here is actually a flower. It's, a, it's called vitidinia. So what's gonna, vitidinia? It's, um, it's, it's a daisy. So right. it's a native daisy. Now, you're going to notice a problem straight away about this one, is in the breeze here, it's just disappearing. So yeah, it's, it's actually, I've, I've squashed it together a bit, but if I just open this up, we're going to have vitidinia going across the vineyards. More than 40 different types of native grasses and flowers are being mixed together with sawdust, which acts as a sowing medium. The spokes on the tractor disturb the soil, which the seed mix then gets dropped onto in just the right spot for it to germinate. The more biodiverse the mix, the better. The natives will attract good insects and keep the bad ones away, reducing the need for pesticides and other sprays. From a biodiversity point of view, it's very important to have varying um, plants within within the mid rows to have that ecosystem service there. Uh, it's very important, not only above ground, but below ground as well. Unlike exotic species, the seeds being sown today will take two years to turn into mature stands. I think the benefits that native grasses have far outweigh how long it takes and the expense. I mean, agriculture 
generally speaking, has been taking from the soil for many, many years. And by planting a diverse native grassland, you're actually putting back to the soil. They put carbon in, they build the nutrients. This is without adding fertiliser, without the use of extra chemicals. So the costs to the agricultural endeavour are greatly reduced in the long run by putting in the native grasses. And so how long has this been here? Uh, this ward's been here for about five years now. So this is a mature stand. Um, and it's self-perpetuating, I guess, so it's self-seeding. And so the hope is, with what Andrew has sown today, that's eventually going to look just like this? Yes, correct. And so what's your hope then for the rest of the property? Well, eventually we want to end up with about 100% of the mid-rows under native grass. That, that's our aim. With a changing climate to contend with, the natives also help the vines survive Eden Valley's hot summers. What the natives provide is resilience. All of the management practices that we do here are by no means a silver bullet, um, but they lessen the impact of climate change. Um, and with these, with these practices that, that we utilise, it means we can bounce back a little bit quicker. The other major benefit of native grasses is their resistance to fire. In a way, the summer's devastating bushfires have created ground zero for ecological recovery. It creates a unique opportunity to rebuild a low fuel ecosystem, which is exactly what UniSA ecologist Joan Gibbs is doing. Little more than her house was spared when an out-of-control bushfire swept through the Adelaide Hills region last December. It burned 25,000 hectares of land, including homes and livestock. Professor Gibbs attributes the severity of the blaze to the lack of native vegetation. Oh, we watched our place burn fiercely in the exotics. When it went through the eucalypt forest, through the native forest, with a native understory, the fire was very gentle and slow and it gave a kind of a blue smoke. And then it hit pine trees and phalaris and it swirled up in black smoke and exploded really noisily, very, very hot. So native plants give a cool fire, exotic plants give excessively hot fire, even the rocks exploded. So today we're going to try some new experiments. Professor Gibbs is on a mission to heal the scorched earth. Biochar is black gold for restoration and restoring the land and getting the natives back. We need that. She's using charcoal from the fires as a fertiliser and an oatmeal sludge to stick the seeds to the soil. 97% of the biodiversity on Earth is in the top 10 centimetres of soil. And if we ignore the soil, uh, we don't get the whole system functioning. I'm going to give you a bag with some seeds and some scats. She's using a team of volunteers. And we've got one metre square plots. They're planting see. experimental plots around her property and will monitor the progress. Mm -hmm. Spread your seeds first, scratch it, and then we'll put the glue on. It may seem counterintuitive to plant grasses as a way to reduce fire risk, but both ecologists insist that's not the case with natives. Generally speaking, a native grassland may vary in fuel load from, let's say, two tonne to five tonne a hectare, whereas uh, introduced species or exotic species uh, can be anywhere up to 17, even to 25 tonnes per hectare. And that is when you have a fire that's coming through and you have a, a grassland that's, say, t two or three tonnes a hectare, it's manageable. Despite all the benefits, in parts of Australia, native grasses have been overlooked and underappreciated. We're always looking at trying to adapt um, our practices um, in the most environmentally friendly way. Agriculture does have a big, big part to play and it's about the biodiversity, it's about restoring the native grasslands and working with the uh, agricultural property or the, in, the agricultural endeavour to benefit their business but also benefit the environment as a whole.